On to your phone calls. Do you trust the FBI and the Justice Department? There is a piece that was posted over the weekend by Josh Campbell. Why I am leaving the FBI. It's available online at nytimes.com. And he says, after more than a decade of service, which included investigating terrorism, working to rescue kidnapping victims overseas, and being special assistant to the director, I am reluctantly turning in my badge and leaving an organization I love. Why? So I can join the growing chorus of people who believe that the relentless attacks on the Bureau undermine not just America's premier law enforcement agency, but also the nation's security. My resignation, writes Josh Campbell, is painful, but the alternative of remaining quiet while the Bureau is tarnished, tarnished for political gain is impossible. Tell us what you think. We'll go to Willie first in Annapolis, Democrats line. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Uh, in my opinion, I think there is something going on that's uh, really unbelievable when it comes to trusting with the FBI. And I do believe in the FBI and the Justice, the Justice Department. But what I am disturbed about is that Putin has learned that he can tap into our divis divisiveness. And I think we need to stop fooling ourselves. One of the biggest problems has to do a lot with racism that's going on, too. And he's tapped into this. And it's also telling me it's more than just Trump. It's probably the Republican Party. And again, like I said, I do believe in our justice and our FBI and our federal investigation and our system of government, not to have it undermined it. Thank you very much for the call. We'll go to Anthony in South River, New Jersey, Independent Line. Good morning. Good morning, Anthony. Are you with us? Thank you, Chrissy. Can you hear me? We sure can. Go ahead. Okay, I got the flu. So. <laughs> but I wanted to call. I have a comment and a question. Uh, my comment is that the only proof is that the election gets meddled with so far to me is to hear that, well, we have former President Clinton and the letters on the farm act. Then we have the FBI director overstepping this down, saying, like, oh, there was a lot of stuff going on, but, you know, there's never enough to charge anybody. And it, how anybody standing back, it just seems like the fix is on. Anthony, I'm going to stop you there. You're breaking up on the cell phone. We heard just part of what you said. Uh, but if you want to redial and we'll try to get you back on, we'd appreciate it. This is from Robert Charles on the Fox News website. President Trump is right. He and his campaign were victims of a political attack by the Justice Department and the FBI. He writes the following. It turns out the much maligned chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Devin Nunez of California, is one of the most daring whistleblowers in modern American history. Nunez was right to be distressed at what he discovered. All Americans should be. Why Democrats on the Intelligence Committee do not share this distress is beyond understanding, except because of short-sighted maneuvering for political advantage. And then Robert Charles goes on to write the following. The memo by Republicans on the committee summarizes raw intelligence confirming that formerly steady and professional staff at the Justice Department and the FBI were motivated to act against candidate Trump by personal antipathy towards him, media-stroked fear of him, and perhaps personal loyalties to Hillary Clinton. You can read the full essay at foxnews.com. Janice is joining us next, joining us on the Republican line, Plymouth, Michigan. Good morning. Good morning. Um, first of all, I trust the rank and file of the FBI and the Justice Department, but the leadership has undergone a terrible transformation uh, in the last 10 years or so. And unfortunately, the last time I called C-SPAN was last September, and at that time I said that these Obama holdovers have been working undercover. You know, they, they're trained to work undercover. And Unfortunately, they have directed their efforts um, and their talents towards trying to overthrow a duly elected president. Now, it's unfortunate that um, the media is backing up people like Comey and um, Adam Schiff. Every Adam Schiff never met a TV camera he didn't like. And they're literally lying about the memo. They said it was would have a constitutional crisis and um, so on and so forth. Unfortunately for them, once the memo is released, we see, no, you know, it's not, does not give us sources and methods, does not, um, the only names it names are this Carter Page character, 
who was a volunteer. He was not a paid member of the campaign. Um, and I'm so disappointed in some of the callers that jump to things like racism and all this. You know, it has nothing to do with it. This is our the bedrock of our country is the rule of law. And this trying to twist the rule of law uh, language on its head by bringing, saying Republicans always supported the rule of law. Now look at them. They're trying to destroy the FBI. No, they're not trying. They're trying to fix the FBI. Janice, thanks for the call. Let's read some tweets from BC Venice. The GOP false attacks on our justice system need to be addressed. The Justice Department is a separate entity from the executive branch. As much as they try to illegally merge the branches, checks and balances. And this from Robert, I trust our FBI and Justice Department much more than D.C. committee rooms and Wall Street boardrooms. Another tweet from this viewer, deceptive question, lumping all together those who use the departments for political bias and manipulation. And this from Richard, Trump fired Comey over, quote, the Russia thing. And finally, another viewer saying, I used to trust him, but no more. The FBI is just part of the swamp. J. Edgar Hoover is rolling over in his grave right now. This is a very sad day for the Department of Justice. Back to your calls. Republican line, Robert in Hazard, Kentucky. Good morning. Thank you for waiting. Uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, you're one of my favorite hosts. I think you are very fair. You treat everybody fair that calls in. Uh, Steve, I think answers are going to vary across uh, about this question. There's going to be a lot of people for the FBI, a lot of people mm -hmm. against them. But me here in Hazard, I do trust the FBI. I agree with the last caller. You've got to have rule of law. You can remember Eric C. Kahn back maybe here in Kentucky. It was probably the federal government that got him. It wasn't the locals or the state, and it was the federal so I think you got to have the federal government, and we do trust the FBI here in Hazard. And Steve, I thank you for taking my call, and you're one of the best, man. We thank you, Robert, for phoning in from Kentucky. Let's go on to the Democrats' line. Spence in Clarksburg, West Virginia. You're next. Hey, good. Hey, good morning to you. Good I'd morning. like to say I believe I believe Fox News might be paid by Russia to throw division between the people. That's just a theory, but I believe that when the uh, Russian uh, got involved in this situation when we have a Congress that goes against the rule of law. In other words, they're against our police, our FBI. Mm -hmm. When they ask them not to release anything, I really don't feel the Democrats should let it out either. Uh, although it's kind of like if we turn our back against the police, then you're you're looking at a situation where the police might tell you, "Hey, sir, all you people don't go down that street." Mm -hmm. So we have to respect the rule of law above any person that's in the White House or anyone that's in Congress. I think Congress needs to do their job, be independent, investigate this. We really need to know where Russia stands in our, involved in our government because there's too many coincidences. Have a great day, Stephen. Thanks for being there today. Thank you, Spence. We appreciate it. If you're just joining us or if you're listening on C-SPAN Radio, we're asking you about the Justice Department and the FBI. We also welcome our viewers on the BBC Parliament Channel, which carries this program every Sunday afternoon, local time in Great Britain, and on Channel 124, Sirius XM, the POTUS Channel, which also simulcasts C-SPAN's Washington Journal every Sunday morning. The Boston Herald, with this editorial, Representative Nunes memo is just Pure politics. It's available online. Here's an excerpt. So that was it? That was the classified memo that was going to shake the intelligence community to its core? Really? Question mark. If that was the intention of Congressman Devin Nunes, the chair of the House Intelligence Committee, to give President Trump whatever spacious rationale uh, he is looking for to fire his growing list of perceived enemies, including the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, he is going to have to do a lot better than the pile of steaming manure left on the doorstep of the American public. Senator McCain wrote, if we continue to undermine our rule of law, we are doing Putin's job for him. That is the real bottom line here, writes the Boston Herald editorial. That and Washington's ongoing dysfunction. On the independent line, John is joining us from Pennsylvania. Good morning. Welcome to the conversation. John, you with us? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Can you hear me? We sure can. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I was. Uh, I had a comment, but I'll just go with the Boston Herald. Um, I just have to say this. The first few callers, it sounded like 
the only thing they've ever watched in their lives is Fox and Friends and then Hannity at night. Fox News is a joke. They work for Trump. Trump work Trump works for them. The major problem I have with C-SPAN is that you accept these re- statements from people. You got to know that some of them are just so off the wall and you can't come back. It doesn't do the American public any good to just have people call in. It's it's like having Trump call in. It's useless. Well, John, don't you think we are a reflection of America in, in terms of who's calling into the program, this or any program? Well, sure, sure. But the moderators, you might as well just put a dummy up there mm-hmm. and let people call in, just pose the question. Because you folks know. I mean, you've got Kimberly whatever her last name, Atkins, I think. Atkins, uh-huh. She writes for the, a Boston paper. Mm-hmm. You've got brains. Everybody else that accepts these calls has brains. You've got to give a little comeback to people who are just completely off the wall. It's like watching well, Fox News. I'd like to think we're not dummies, but <laughs> thank you for that, John. Uh, the point is that if people are calling in with their, with their opinion during this part of the program, our job is really just to to hear from you and to have you and others express, you know, you have your point of view and we're going to talk to Bob in just a moment. He'll have his point of view and Bill's on the line. He'll have his point of view. And so if we start going down that path of correcting, go ahead, I'm sorry. There are facts and there are unfacts or lies. Well, I was just going to say, when there there are factual errors, we'll correct that. But if it's an opinion, that is the opinion of the the caller. And our job is to facilitate that, not to, uh, you know, to second guess their point of view. Think about this and tell Susan to think about this. You've been on for 30 plus years. The conditions in the United States have gotten much worse as far as divisions. Mm -hmm. If we had something that had like an instant fact check or the best you can do, then we wouldn't be continually divided. I mean, Fox News, there was a Maryland study and a Cornell study that interviewed thousands of people. And I'm sure you've heard of this because it was done a few years Mm -hmm. back. And people who watch Fox News or listen to Fox know less than people in terms of world affairs and political affairs know less than people who watch no news at all. I mean, that's kind of an answer right there. And and that's your opinion, and and we respect that. Um, But, John, thanks very much for calling, and I hope you uh, phone in again. We appreciate it. Yep. We'll go to Bob, who's joining us from Duluth, Minnesota. Is your state ready for the Super Bowl today? Yeah, it's going to be cold out. But, I heard that. What's the temperature outside? I know it's inside, but it's still going to be cold outside. Uh, the temperature out right now, uh, it's it's below zero. It's pretty cold. I can see that. So, uh, so your but, comment on the FBI and the Justice Department, Bob? Yeah, uh, my comment is that uh, the FBI stumbled across Carter Page way back in 2013 when they were bugging a spy ring. So this has been going on since 2013 with Carter Page, and they're saying that uh, uh, it was politically motivated. And uh, if they were doing this way back in 2013, it's got nothing to do with being politically motivated. And uh, the FBI, I don't think, can rebut what they're talking about because uh, there's... A lot of things that they just can't say, and uh, uh, if they uh, every time they put something out there, they could expose uh, one of their sources that might have found Carter Page. And uh, I'm not saying that they—that's the way they found him. They found they found him. I was watching on Rachel Maddow. Uh, they found Carter Page when they were bugging a spy ring, and that was in 2013. But uh, if uh, if you start exposing your sources, uh, you know the FBI can't do that. That's why they won't rebut. But uh, this got nothing to do with uh, politics. This is just trying to smear the FBI and to shut down the Mueller investigation. So that's my comment. Bob, thanks very much. More tweets. This is from Jody. I'm happy that C-SPAN's Washington Journal allows me to hear real people who, if not for the Washington Journal, I would never believe what these people were possible. It's like knowing my enemy is better. 
And this from Liberty, it's not just the FBI. Listen to Republican elites now. They also vigorously and routinely attack the court system and half of the judges, especially Mexican ones. From Mylon Burke, if I was Devin Nunes' boss, I would fire him. And this tweet from Robert Geffens, the FBI abuses go back to Martin Luther King. And finally, this tweet, yes, Steve, reading editorials that disparage anything Republican is so helpful. So thanks for your comments. We will keep reading them. A tweet at C-SPAN WJ or join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash C-SPAN. Bill, Columbia Falls, Montana, Republican line. Do you trust the FBI and the Justice Department? Uh, I trust the line agents. I don't trust the senior management of the FBI. And that's what this is all about right now. Mm -hmm. um, there's a website by a former FBI agent called BrickAgentUnderground.com. And he goes into great detail there about how their senior management are the most incompetent agents that get promoted to the upper ranks. That the uh, competent agents who enjoy investigations and are excel at investigations do not go into management. They prefer to be what's called a brick agent, which is another word for uh, a line agent. And so the FBI's worst are actually the ones that are elevated into the upper management. I'm thinking back to uh, the time that Louis Free was uh, director of the FBI, and it seemed like every other day when we picked up the newspaper, it was Ruby Ridge, Waco, um, the Walker spiring. I mean, some of the massive debacles that the FBI suffered. And these were all the result of incompetent management at the top. And that's what's going on right now. The management at the top of the FBI uh, is screwing everything up. It's not the line agents. They have to suffer through this management just as the country does. Bill, thanks and for the so call. Oh, thank you. Your final point, I'm sorry. Bill, you still with us? Well, thanks for the Hello. call. We'll move on. Thanks for the call from Montana. National Review has this editorial available at nationalreview.com. The Nunez memo should just be the start. Here's an expert, uh, an excerpt, I should say. The Nunez memo has been released, and America's national security has not, as far as we can tell, been irreparably harmed. If we were to move against Rosenstein, it might cause a semi-collapse of his Justice Department, give further fodder to Robert Mueller, and undo the political headway Republicans have made in recent weeks. Trump should sit tight and await his eventual vindication. The Nunes memo has broken the seal on information related to the start of the Russian investigation. The Republic will survive and, in fact, benefit from an airing of the circumstances of this episode. We did online at nationalreview.com. On our line for independence, Nick in Sarasota, Florida. Good morning. You're next. Good morning, Steve. I think that national review is correct. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> what they should do is appoint another uh, special counsel to look into all these people at the top of the FBI. And, and this is what worries me about some of your callers that obviously are from blue states. Mm -hmm. They want to make this about Trump. It's about the presidency. You've got people using the most powerful agencies in our government to try and unseat a duly elected president. It doesn't make any difference that it's Trump. And I want to know when the word treason is going to start being thrown into the conversation. All these political comments, hey, Trump, anti-Trumpers, uh, who did what to who and all that. I, I mean, I, I just think it's insane. I want to see some action on these people who've done all this stuff that is proven. I don't care what Rachel Maddow says or any of these you know, people that uh, talk like they're from Russia or Venezuela. Mm -hmm. I want something these people that are destroying our government, and it's clear that that's exactly what they've been doing. Nick, thanks for the call from Sarasota, Florida. On Friday, on special report with Brett Baer, the chair of the House Intelligence Committee, Republican Congressman Debbie Nunes, had this to say on the release of that memo. I didn't want to have to do this, uh, but the sad part is, is that I have an obligation to the American people when we see FISA abuse, so these are secret courts that exist, uh, to target uh, for foreigners, for catching terrorists, for catching people who might be bad actors. 
uh, and the American citizens that are represented before this court uh, have to be protected. And the only place that can protect them is the U.S. Congress uh, when abuses do occur. Did you write so the So it's not a place we wanted to go. It's not a place we wanted to go, but it's where we had to go. Did you write it? Uh, myself, Trey Gowdy, our two investigators, uh, and then obviously checked by the lawyers and the rest of our committee members. Did you read the actual FISA applications? No, I didn't. Uh, the, and this has been uh, one of these uh, bogus news stories that have been put out. Uh, so the agreement we made with the Department of Justice was to create a reading room uh, and allow one member and two investigators to go over and review the documents. Uh, I thought the best person on our committee would be the chairman of the Oversight Committee, Trey Gowdy, who has a long career as a federal prosecutor, uh, to go and do this. Uh, and then they, over a series of meetings, would come back with their notes and brief the rest of the committee members. Did you or anyone on your committee coordinate in any way with President Trump or the administration on the release of this memo? No, in fact, we opened up this investigation. No, we, in, in fact, we opened up an investigation into DOJ and FBI for FISA abuse and other matters uh, last summer, in the summer of 17. How about with President Trump's lawyers in any way? No. Outside conservative groups, just one today put out an ad that's targeting Rod Rosenstein, the Deputy Attorney General, uh, saying that he needs to do his job or quit. Uh, any, it seems like it was timed out, but did you work with any outside groups in the formulation of this memo? Uh, no, no, I didn't. In fact, I personally like Rod Rosenstein. Uh, but look, the bottom line here is, is both Mr. Rosenstein, Mr. Sessions, Attorney General Sessions, and Director Ray uh, have work to do. And they can't start doing their work to root out the problems if you don't admit first that you have a problem, and they've been unwilling to do that. From Friday evening on Special Report, the Fox News Channel and the chair of the House Intelligence Committee, Republican Congressman Devin Nunes. And we're asking you whether or not you trust the FBI and the Justice Department. By the way, the cover story of National Review has Raging Bull, a look at Senator Cory Booker. And some of the tweets on the topic of our question this morning, north of Boston saying, Trump and the Russian mob all hate the FBI. And there's this tweet from Edward, secret courts, no good. Who has the authority to overhaul the FISA courts? Don is joining us from Salinas, California, Republican line. Good morning. Hi. Yeah, I, I wanted to, to say a few things. Uh, first is Trump is not going after the rank and file of the DOJ or the FBI. What he's pointing out is these politically appointed partisans and their hand-picked cronies with their hands on the levers of power in the DOJ and the FBI, twisting it and corrupting it for their own favor. Case in point, this Carter Page. How many times was his warrant re-upped? These special warrants reserved for terrorists and drug dealers? Has Carter Page been charged with anything? And, and has he done anything except talk on the phone to somebody? They wanted a back door. They wanted a window into the Trump campaign, and that is what they've got. And now they have the gall that when people point this out and say there's corruption going on, them and their allies in the media have the gall to say, oh, maybe they are corrupt. Maybe this was bad, but don't point it out. You're going to hurt the reputation of the FBI. I'm sorry. They hurt the reputation of the FBI. And the media should be very much ashamed of itself because this same media that printed the secrets of our military from WikiLeaks that was leaked have the guts to stand up and say they don't want to print the memo. Please don't send the memo out. Don't publicize it. They will endanger national security. Really? Give me a break. Don from California. Time Magazine, the cover story out this past week, and we talked to uh, Bill Hennigan on C-SPAN Radio on Thursday, Making America Nuclear Again, Trump's Gamble, a look at the expansion of our nu nuclear capabilities under the Trump administration. Carol Olds has this tweet. You must read the text messages between Strzok and Lisa Page. They made clear that they w wanted to take Trump down. I don't recall the Washington Journal reading any of them, and I doubt if the liberal media did either. Well, in fact, we did read the text from last week as they were released. Sam is joining us, Independent Line from Hornsby, Tennessee. Good morning. Good morning. First thing I want to say is the American people got a short memory. Khrushchev in 1962 said that Russia would destroy the United States from within. And ever since then, they've been putting propaganda out, trying to interfere in our elections and everything else they could do. 
But James Comey destroyed the reputation of the FBI in his July the 5th press conference when first he convicted Hillary and then he exonerated her. In May the 5th of the following year, during his open hearing, he testified and explained why he'd done it and sat there and said, I'd do it again. If you listen to Jeff Sessions' hearings, he has testified two different times. That's the reason why James Comey was fired, because he said he would do the same thing again. As far as Fox News, anybody watches MSNBC, that's the authorized television station for North Korean military to watch. There was a You still with us? We'll move on to Derek then in Reynoldstown, Maryland. Good morning, Democrats line. I tell you, I'll be glad when you get some educated uh, Republicans on who, who, because you can tell most of them never probably probably graduated from high school. But it, 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 this is a shame. The FBI, listen, why is it that we never talk about Donald Trump's son? We never talk about Donald Trump's son. This guy's in big trouble. This guy set up a meeting with uh, 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 with these people from Russia. And for some reason, instead of calling them off, he could have just called the FBI. They could have set it up. He could have been right in there. They had the FBI. They could have caught him red-handed. No, he didn't. And then he said his father never knew anything about it. Don't talk about the FBI. You have a guy that lies every time he opens his mouth. His name is Donald Day J. Trump. Thank you. Derek from Maryland. By the way, join in on the conversation. Share your comments. On our Facebook page, this is what it looks like at facebook.com slash C-SPAN. Also, you can send us a tweet at C-SPAN WJ. More editorial and fallouts from the release of that memo. This from the Los Angeles Times. The Nunes memo promises much and delivers nothing remotely credible. Quote, even if one takes the Republican memo at face value, writes the LA Times editorial, it does not demonstrate that the surveillance of uh, Mr. Page was illegitimate. Even if the government should have been more forthcoming about the funding of Steele's information, the former British spy had been trusted, had been a trusted source for the FBI in the past. And the memo undercuts the idea that the Steele dossier launched the FBI investigation of whether there was collusion between Russia and the people associated with the Trump campaign. The memo acknowledges that the counterintelligence investigation was triggered by information about George Papadopoulos, a Trump campaign advisor who pleaded guilty last year to lying to the FBI. That editorial from the LA Times. Mary Lou is joining us from Newington, Connecticut. Good morning, Independent Line. Good morning. I want to know how long we are going to have to deal with Hillary and Bill Clinton. What have they done to this country? I can't understand it. Why don't they go somewhere and get out of here? They have destroyed the United States ever since Bill Clinton came into this in 1993. He is a sexual pervert. Everybody else in the country is being held up to being sexual perverts, all these men, but not him. He, he, everybody in the press denies that he ever did anything. I talk to people, they say, oh, I didn't know that. He raped somebody? Gee, I didn't know that. And Hillary, she's supposed to defend women. And she has a, lives with a husband. She never, ever thought of divorcing him. She lives with a guy who she knows has done that. And now the whole FBI is trying to defend this woman. I mean, I've never seen that two people could have such an effect on a country like this, it, I, it, I toss and turn at night and wonder how, I mean, the FBI is defending her. James Comey would not say that she did anything wrong. She has, she erased 33,000 emails. Nobody does anything about that. What, I wish somebody would come in and tell me why we keep holding these two people up to, I mean, they're destroying the United States. We'll go on to Mary, joining us from Eureka, California, Democrats line. Good Sunday morning. 
Your comment? Oh, hello. Good morning. <laughs> hello, hello, Steve, and thank you so much for your service and, and for C-SPAN and PBS and all those other stations like that. Um, my my a, a, my answer on FBI and intelligence mm-hmm. committee, I I believe them. Um, I haven't always believed them. I, I'm an old hippie. You know, you had your problems with the FBI a, a long time ago. I haven't had a problem with them in a long time. I mean, I remember when I I think it was. Well, it was before 9-11, one of their agents got a clue about something was going to happen in 9-11, and he, he put intelligence together. He didn't wasn't able to stop it, but I mm-hmm. certainly thought that he was a smart man. I think he was from Arizona. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, I, I guess that's what I wanted to say, except I'm happy that the Clintons are in our country, and I'm happy that they've done a, a good job for our country. And I'm tired of people talking about uh, talking about Bill at this point and Hillary. I don't think that she should be pillared the way that she is, I mean, even if she, even if she said those things about the other women, which was not a good thing to say. Um, okay, Mary, and- thanks for the call from Eureka, California. Richard, this tweet, Trump supports Roy Moore, birds of a feather. Next is jo- Norman joining us from Oklahoma, Republican line. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Norman. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine. Uh, I think you pretty well held your own on that caller back and calls uh insinuated that you know everyone's just stupid uh girl watched nothing but fox news and and uh i think you stood up for yourself really good proud of you <laughs> but, Thank uh, you as far as this F- you bet. as far as this fbi situation i mean it's nothing but a kooky talk i mean it's, it's uh thank god that he won because if we'd have had Hillary in there, all this stuff would have been swept on her. Too. We'd have never heard about it. They exonerated her. They uh, they were so confident that she was going to win because they paid off Bernie Sanders to get him out of the out of the primaries, and then she flashed all the money around that you know that George Soros and all them communists. I, I just don't understand. Ten years ago, the Democrats would have would have mirrored almost Trump's talking points need border security you know i mean uh but now they they figured out that they're going to import their new voters and uh obama bringing them across the having them come across the line catching relief they got buses down there. i've been down there they got buses down there that load these people up and take them like minnesota uh, utah they distribute them out all through the the country where they need to make up 10,000 votes here, you know, 10,000 votes in some little uh, communities, areas will uh, will throw an election. And, and if people think that these motor voter illegal immigrants that are here is not voting, I mean, it's, it's, it's absurd. I mean, how you can't get your head that far in the sand. I mean, I it might just be rectal cranial inversion. I don't know. I'm being nice about this, but I'm just dumb old farm boy from out here in, in Oklahoma. What gets me is they're going to say, they're going to say, oh, Norman, uh, you own all this land. You can't, and, and it's just you and your little family in that in that, ha- that big old house. Uh, there's no way possible you can live on all that much land. And they've got 40 people in one little hut or, mm-hmm. or whatever, you know, the way that uh, you look. Mexicans, they all put their money together, and they're going to say, well, let's vote about this, you know, and I guarantee you the demographics are changing in in 20 years. In 20 years, they have seven kids to our two. Norman, I'm going to stop you there. We're going to move on with other calls and comments. Thanks for joining us from Oklahoma, and this is from Thomas. The FBI has a history of spying on liberals. MLK, JFK, et cetera, since it's happening to conservatives, now Congress is outraged. And The Nation magazine has this editorial, Betraying the Constitution in the Service of Donald Trump. It's available online at thenation.com. Here's an excerpt. 
At the heart of the U.S. Constitution is a system of checks and balances that was established primarily to guard against the concentration of power in an executive branch that might tend toward royalism. House Speaker Paul Ryan is not supporting the Constitution, writes The Nation magazine. He is shredding it. Make no mistake, Paul Ryan has zero interest in accountability, transparency, or cleaning up the problems with law enforcement agencies and the investigative process. He has shown no interest in legitimate and necessary oversight of intelligence agencies. He has never been identified with the cause of civil liberties or the defense of privacy rights. On the Democrats' line, John is next, joining us from New Hampshire. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Steve. And you have a great show this morning, and I uh, appreciate you taking my call. Um, I just want to make a quick, um, several quick observations, just a couple comments here. Being, you know, prior law enforcement, um, anybody that can look at things from a perspective of just common sense, you don't even need a legal degree. A legal mind to understand what's you know what what is and what's not. When Comey was hammering Hillary Clinton during the election process, eleven days out he was a hero. Then, which he shouldn't have done, that was against. I'm sorry, against FBI overstep there. That should be investigated. So I do agree with some investigation to some areas of the FBI, but I don't dis- I do disagree with the premises that they're using. Because when you establish any type of uh, CI, such as a confidential informants, or use a type of a system to identify, like, uh, for example, you had um, that particular FISA warrant could have been issued back in 2003. Now they know who uh, Carter Page was talking to and how they're getting bugged. So that's how part of the information can leak. And third to that is just seven days ago, Nunes, Ryan, all approved the uh, FISA warrant process all over again. No changes. So they're just hypocrites. Just hypocrites. And I'm absolutely disgusted. John from New Hampshire. This is from our viewer north of Boston. Putin's puppet is in the White House, and the Connecticut, Connecticut caller is upset about Bill Clinton two decades ago, exclamation mark. Some of the headlines on this Sunday morning from the Washington Post. Some see irony in the GOP's turn on the FBI. We've read an excerpt at the top of the program. And next to that from the Weekly Standard, the politics of the memo. And quoted in that piece is Sebastian Gorka who's going to be joining us at 9 o'clock Eastern time here on C-SPAN. Meanwhile, the Hill newspaper has this story with a name at the House Speaker Paul Ryan. Social media users slam Paul Ryan on a tweet on a $1.50 pay hike. Speaker Ryan was criticized Saturday on social media for citing a Pennsylvania woman whose paycheck went up $1.50 a week as success of the recently passed GOP tax reform bill. Ryan tweeted a link to an AP story detailing how some workers had begun to see more take-home pay as a result of the new withholding guidelines. The AP featured Julia Ketchum, a high school secretary in Pennsylvania. The paycheck went up $1.50 a week, and she told the AP the increase would cover her Costco membership for the year. Ryan highlighted Ketchum's story in a tweet Saturday that was later deleted. Mary is joining us. Potomac, Maryland. Good morning. Independent Line. Good morning. Uh, I believe the Nunez memo is based only on cherry-picking whatever they found necessary to discredit the FBI. Uh, If people are interested in transparency, then the the Democratic version of the same, on the same topic, should be made uh, public. Uh, Why is uh, Nunez not uh, allowing full transparency so the American people can make their judgment. Uh, this is nothing but putrid McCarthyism all over again. And I think uh, Trump is a huge danger to this country. The sooner he is out, the better. And I feel, what can you expect from a man who is accused of chasing porn stars around the room. Thank you. Mary from Maryland, and this is from Davey. 
that uh, nine FBI agents have been demoted or relieved of duty over this. Obviously, there was wrongdoing and illegal activity. Meanwhile, Ruth Marcus has her opinion inside the uh, op-ed page of today's Washington Post. Nixon's comparisons are unfair to Nixon. You can read it at WashingtonPost.com. Jamie is joining us from New Paltz, New York. Good morning. Welcome to the conversation. Great. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Sure. Um, I just wanted to make a comment that I think it would be interesting if, um, if we were to look at if this whole situation was under President Obama's presidency. I think it would be much different um, as far as people would be viewing it. I mean, President Obama was had to, held to such a high standard that um, and it seems like this president is just continues to lower the bar and thinks that it's okay to completely insult, um, you know, the very foundations of our Constitution. And that um, this Russia thing, it's very frightening. And I think that people really need to think about the fact that Russia is not looking out for our best interests and that they're very much involved in our election system and that it's a serious problem. And appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Um, By the way, coming up uh, later in the program, Steve Clemens of The Atlantic as we talk about the Davos World Economic Forum, the President's speech, and of course the President's State of the Union address, and Betsy Woodruff of The Daily Beast is going to be joining us in just a moment to talk more about the memo. Cindy from Fort Worth, Texas, you're next. Your comment on the Justice Department, the FBI, do you still trust these two agencies? Uh, yes, I, I actually do. Um, you know, I think people need to remember that uh, Trump is the one that appointed Rosenstein and Ray and Sessions. And um, I, I think Rosenstein is probably the only one that's standing between, uh, you know, uh, Trump uh, firing Mueller, um, and I think that uh, it, it's just unbelievable what Trump is doing to, to the whole government, uh, and, and, and the Republicans are standing by letting him do it. And for those people that are calling in supporting Trump, it, it just amazes me that they, they watch Fox News and pick up everything that Hannity says. Um, I mean, you know, you can just listen to him, and, and it sounds like Kennedy speaking. It is just ridiculous that they that that's all they know, uh, and they don't even research stuff on their own so they could possibly find out the truth. Cindy, uh, thanks for the call. This is from Chris. It's funny how these people hollering about transparency in the FBI don't mind that President Trump has still not released his tax returns. The news analysis piece inside the New York Times, also on page one of the New York Times, the president wages an unparalleled war. Congressman Adam Schiff is the ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee. He appeared on CNN Friday. But look, the, the memo starts out by saying that they're going to tell the reader about a s systemic uh, series of abuses at the FBI uh, that really call into question the whole FISA court process. Uh, and what it ends up delivering is criticism of a single FISA application involving Carter Page and its renewals that cherry picks information that doesn't tell the reader the whole of the application uh, and is, as the DOJ and FBI have said, deeply misleading and factually inaccurate. You could cherry pick any search warrant application or FISA court application and do the same thing. If the committee, Wolf, was seriously interested in oversight here, uh, they would have done what we usually do, which is they would have said, let's bring in the FBI. Let's hear what they have to say. If they think something should have been included in the application, you ask the FBI why they didn't include it. Uh, but here they refused to allow the FBI to come in and testify. And that tells you what their real goal was. And that was to put out this uh, memo and use it to try to uh, impeach the credibility of our own uh, FBI. From CNN on Friday in this headline from The Washington Post at the FBI fears of lasting damage. Quote, in the 109 years of the FBI's existence, it has repeatedly come under fire for abuses of power, privacy, or civil rights. From red scares to recording and threatening to expose the private conduct of Martin Luther King to benefiting from the bulk surveillance in the digital age, the FBI is accustomed to intense criticism. What is so unusual about the current moment, say current and former law enforcement officials, is the source of the attacks. 
The Bureau is under fire not from those on the left, but rather conservatives who have long been the agency's biggest supporters as well as the president's hand-picked FBI leader. The public attacks from the president have diminished morale inside the FBI, according to current and former officials. Ron Hosko, a former FBI assistant director, said some of the president's behavior towards the Justice Department and the FBI might do lasting damage. Timothy from Horseheads, New York, Democrats line, good morning. Good morning. I just want to know why they haven't decided to simply indict some of the members of Congress behind this memo, considering the memo itself, many people would believe, constitutes obstruction of justice, and I think they need to indict Devin Nunes and others for releasing it. John, you get the last word from California. Good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. You know, uh, uh, my, my thing is I'm still waiting to hear all what all the evidence is about the Russian involvement. The only thing they've produced is that there's been $100,000 worth of Facebook ads. You know, I mean, there's got to be more than that. You know, and furthermore, on the FBI, no, I don't trust them. They have a long, long history of interfering with people's uh, private things, Waco, Ruby Ridge, Martin Luther King, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I, I'm just waiting to, I, I'm a little disappointed in the memo, but uh, it's just the tip of the iceberg. They really need to bring in additional evidence to see what exactly the evidence is on these FICA, the FISA courts. And that's really kind of the problem there is, are these courts having secret courts, secret judges, secret evidences, evidence, I mean, that's the problem. We need to get rid of those things. We need transparency. Let's see really what's going on behind the scenes. From Descanso, California, John, on Republican line, thanks for the call. Well, coming up in just a moment.